Hello friends, we're going to be reading out of 1 Samuel and we will be starting with chapter 8. Thank you so much for joining me. Grab your Bibles if you want to read along. Saul becomes king of Israel and Israel requests a king. As Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons to be judges over Israel. Joel and Abijah, his oldest sons, held court in Beersheba, but they were not like their father, for they were greedy for money. They accepted bribes and perverted justice. Finally, all the elders of Israel met at Ramah to discuss the matter with Samuel. Look, they told him, you are now old and your sons are not like you. Give us a king to judge us like all the other nations have. Samuel was displeased with the request and went to the Lord for guidance. Do everything they say to you, the Lord replied, for they are rejecting me, not you. They don't want me to be their king any longer. Ever since I brought them from Egypt, they have continually abandoned me and followed other gods. And now they are giving you the same treatment. Do as they ask, but solemnly warn them about the way a king will reign over them. Samuel warns against a kingdom. So Samuel passed on the Lord's warning to the people who were asking him for a king. This is how a king will reign over you, Samuel said. The king will draft your sons and assign them to his chariots and his charioteers, making them run before his chariots. Some will be generals and captains in his army. Some will be forced to plow in his fields and harvest his crops. And some will make his weapons and chariot equipment. The king will take your daughters from your own you and force them to cook and bake and make perfumes for him. He will take away the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his own officials. He will take a tenth of your grain and your grape harvest and distribute among his officers and attendants. He will take your male and female slaves and demand the finest of your cattle and donkeys for his own use. He will demand a tenth of your flocks and you will be his slaves. When that day comes, you will beg for relief from this king that you are demanding. But then the Lord will not help you. But the people refused to listen to Samuel's warning. Even so, we still want a king. They said, we want to be like the nations around us. Our king will judge us and lead us into battle. So Samuel repeated to the Lord what the people had said, and the Lord replied, Do as they say and give them a king. Then Samuel agreed and sent the people home. Chapter 9, Saul meets Samuel. There was a wealthy, influential man named Kish from the tribe of Benjamin. He was the son of Abiel, son of Zeror, son of Becherath, son of Aphiah of the tribe of Benjamin. His son Saul was the most handsome man in all of Israel head and shoulders taller than anyone else in the land. One day, Kish's donkey strayed away, and he told Saul, Take a servant with you and go look for the donkeys. So Saul took one of the servants and traveled through the hill country of Ephraim, the land of Shalisha and Shalim area, and the entire land of Benjamin, but they couldn't find the donkeys anywhere. Finally, they entered the region of Zuth, and Saul said to his servant, Let's go home. By now my father will be more worried about us than about the donkeys. But the servant said, I've just thought of something. There's a man of God who lives here in this town. He's held in high honor by all the people because everything he says comes true. Think about our reading just a few minutes ago. Everything he says comes true. Let's go find him. Perhaps he can tell us which way to go. But we don't have anything to offer him, Saul replied. Even our food is gone and we don't have a thing to give him. Well, the servant said, I have one small silver piece. We can at least offer it to the man of God and see what happens. In those days, if people wanted a message from God, they would say, let's go ask a seer. For prophets used to be called seers. All right, Saul agreed. Let's try it. So they started to the town where the man of God lived. And they were climbing the hill to the town. They met some young women coming out of draw to draw water. So Saul and his servant asked, Is the seer here today? Yes, they replied. Stay right on this road. And at the town gates, he has just arrived to take part in public sacrifice up 
at the place of worship. Hurry and catch him before he goes up there to eat. The guests won't begin eating until he arrives to bless the food. So they entered the town, and as they passed through the gates, Samuel was coming out toward them to go up to the place of worship. Now the Lord had told Samuel the previous day, About this time tomorrow I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him to be a leader of my people, Israel. He will rescue them from the Philistines, for I have looked down on my people in mercy and have heard of their cry. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said, That's the man I told you about. He will rule my people. Just then Saul approached Samuel at the gateway and asked, Can you please tell me where the seer's house is? I am the seer, Samuel replied. Go up to the place of worship ahead of me. We will eat there together, and in the morning I will tell you what you want to know and send you on your way. And don't worry about those donkeys that were lost three days ago, for they have been found. And I am here to tell you that you and your family are the focus of all of Israel's hopes. Shouldn't be, though, but they are. Saul replied, but I am only from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe in Israel. And my family is the least important of all the families of that tribe. Why are you talking like this to me? Then Samuel brought Saul and his servant into the hall and placed them at the head of the table, honoring them above the 30 special guests. Samuel then instructed the cook to bring Saul the finest cut of meat, the piece that had been set aside for the guest of honor. So the cook brought in the meat and placed it before Saul. Go ahead and eat it, Samuel said. I was saving it for you even before I invited these others. So Saul ate with Samuel that day. When they came down from the place of worship and returned to town, Samuel took Saul up to the roof of the house and prepared a bed for him there. At daybreak the next morning, Samuel called to Saul, Get up, it's, your, it's time you were on your way. So Saul got ready, and he and Samuel left the house together. When they reached the edge of town, Samuel told Saul to send his servant on ahead. After the servant was gone, Samuel said, Stay here, for I have received a special message for you from God. Wow. Okay, so that's the end of 1 Samuel chapter 9. We'll be jumping into chapter 10 next. But there's so many important things going on. Samuel was told by God himself that Saul was on his way and that he was coming from the tribe of Benjamin. And Saul knew nothing about Samuel. And Samuel is the person that speaks to God and hears from God. And the people already have acknowledged that everything he says comes true. He warns the people of Israel of what's going to happen if they choose this man to be their king. It's a flag to me that he's from the tribe of Benjamin. And the tribe of Benjamin is the least for a few reasons. One is at the end of um, Judges, when we're reading about what happened to the tribe of Benjamin and how they were almost all killed off and what happened there. Maybe go back to read Judges if you have forgotten some of that text. But it's just absolutely amazing that Samuel is able to hear from God the way he does with the clarity that he hears. The Bible is so well knit together and it is such divine word. There's not a piece of scripture that is out of place, that is misdirected or purposeless. God is so good to speak to us and to give us direction in his holy word. It's such a blessing to have his word here for us. And I think it's so important that when we spend time in the word of God, it's not a race to the finish line. And I know that at least if you're watching this in live time, New Year's is right around the corner. And a lot of people make resolutions to spend more time reading the word of God, uh, deciding that they want to read a certain amount every day. But remember that this is about a relationship with your creator, the God that created the heavens and the earth. The Bible is beautifully knit together and, and just absolutely divine, holy, inspired word of God. And I just think it's totally beautiful. Don't rush through the word of God. Enjoy it. Soak it up. See how it's knit together so perfectly and how pieces of the whole entire Bible come together. There's amazing resources online. And if you don't have a Bible, there are even free resources for the Bible. Now, I don't want to babble on, but I just think the Bible is so beautiful. And I just want more people to see that the best way to know God is to spend time with him and his word. And I just pray that we are fully satisfied in the Lord and that we can love one another as we're called to love. 
And I'm just very grateful to share in the word of the Lord with you today. So have a blessed day and thank you for being here. We'll see you soon.